What happens when two solid characters collide? Things get messy, right? But sometimes these characters end up biting off more than they can chew. The moments when anime characters mess with the wrong guy leave us as shocked as they are. From Mikey one-shotting Osanai to Zeke getting absolutely destroyed by Levi, here are times when anime characters messed with the wrong guy. Starting off this list with a character who's practically invincible. Mario After being isekai to a fantasy world, he gained even more magical energy than the goddess who summoned him. He's basically the one-man demolition army of the fantasy world. Imagine having the power to create an entire other world. This task is nothing for Makoto. Sophia and Mitsurugi consider Makoto their self-proclaimed enemy and they start messing with him, thinking that they've got the upper hand. <laughs> well kids, let's just say they royally screwed up. Things get sweaty when Makoto starts removing one of his eight active limiters. It's funny how Makoto got forced into a random encounter with these two NPCs who clearly didn't have any idea about his power levels. In the process of showing these two who's boss, Makoto accidentally nukes an entire village. Oops. And the craziest part? This wasn't even Makoto's full power. Imagine what would have happened if he unleashed 100% of his strength. Wang Ling is your average high school student. That's if your average high school student were immortal and capable of bending the universe to their will. Flattening an entire city with his single punch is literally not a problem for him. Basically, this dude has godlike powers and messing with him is not a good idea. However, Zhang just had to mess with him by killing his beloved Sun Rong. What's next? Wang Ling going into his rage mode and butchering Zhang. I mean, what was she thinking? Did she really believe she could stand a chance against our boy? Even time freezing couldn't stop him from taking out his anger on the one who dared mess with him. His roars literally gave me chills and made my spine shiver. You know, things are about to get real when the colors around you start shifting. Wang Ling's powers are so mind-bogglingly incomprehensible that anyone thinking they can take him on solo might as well pack it in and head home. Ah yes, Satan aka Sado Mao who got trapped on the earth and forced to work as a part-timer at McDonald's. Satan is a demon lord whose powers are as terrifying as his name. His physical abilities are one thing, but his strategic brilliance is just on another level. We get to see Satan's true powers against his fight with Lucifer, the fallen angel, who thought it was a good idea to go against the great demon lord. After pushing Satan to his limit, Lucifer unwittingly triggered the ultimate power-up, Demon from Activate. Now, you know it's serious when the horns come out and the ground starts shaking. The look of fear on Lucifer's face was priceless and he almost pissed his pants. Bro literally got nuked in the face. You think angels would have some better judgment, right? <laughs> Wrong. This is exactly what happens when you mess with a demon lord. So kids, what lesson have we learned here? Never provoke a guy who could erase you from existence with a single punch. <laughs> Next up, we have an anime character who redefines the term overpowered. This guy isn't just brawn, he's got brains as well. You don't see a guy who can manipulate vectors every day. Accelerator does it like it's child's play. Now, Abaki had a rough day planned when she crossed paths with Accelerator. She thought maybe, well, just maybe he'd lost a step or two. Like maybe he misplaced his power somewhere or something like that. <laughs> Optimism level through the roof. But even while being handicapped, the dude KO'd Abaki without even breaking a sweat. Accelerator is the kind of guy who treats men and women equally. I wonder if she hadn't talked crap about Accelerator and his powers that she might have actually survived. Survived. Just because an OP character gets nerfed in the series doesn't mean you get buff. Moral of the story, never mess with Accelerator, even if he had dealt with some serious brain damage as well as strolling around with the help of a cane. <laughs> Moving on, we have a mastermind who likes to work from the shadows.
The dude literally named himself Shadow, which is a pretty cool name considering his job. On top of that, our boy has a group of extremely loyal and strong girls who are always at his disposal. So we see Shadow genuinely angry and serious for the first time when one of her classmates, Sherry's stepfather's true nature and motive is revealed. Bro avenged Sherry's mom without even her knowing about that. Now, Sherry's stepfather was pretty confident about defeating Shadow, but hey, it is Shadow we're talking about here, so when he's genuinely pissed at someone, it's over for them. Shadow kills Gramps in the most painful way possible. He did all of that right in front of Sherry without telling her anything about the wrongdoings of her father. It's ironic how Shadow's only kind moment just made him even more hated. Killing the bad guy will make you a bad guy too. Who knew justice could be so complicated? Shaking up the list with another Demon King, Arnos Voldigold, the true definition of an OP character. Emilia, Arnos is the Demon King of Tyranny who can back up his title with some of the most ridiculous and over-the-top powers that you've ever seen. And what happens when his loved ones are in danger? or hell breaks loose. When Arnos's mother was attacked by Amelia, the pure-blood narcissist royal, we knew it was about to go down. And at that very moment, Amelia knew she messed up. She really did a noob gamer move and suffered greatly. After all, messing with someone as powerful and ruthless as Arnos is never a good idea. It just fills me with immense joy to see Amelia in such a pathetic and horrible state after what she did. So kids, what did we learn today? Attempting to harm the Demon King's mother is like signing your own death warrant and then handing it to Arnos with a smile. Ah yes, Mikey, the iconic and the most badass character from Tokyo Revengers. Despite his relatively small stature, Mikey can knock out opponents twice his size in literally no time. He's known for one-shotting his opponents throughout the series. You can imagine how powerful and terrifying this guy is. And then there's poor Osanai. You know, someone's in for a bad day when they decide to mess with Mikey on his home turf. Osanai probably thought he was hot stuff, strolling into Mikey's territory like he owned the place. On top of that, he beat up one of the members of the Tokyo Manji Gang. Big mistake. Mikey doesn't seem like it, but he's extremely caring towards his gang members. He's the kind of leader who throw down the devil himself to protect his crew. That's all the more reason for other gangs to not lay a finger on any member of the Tokyo Manji gang. This is one of the most badass kicks Mikey has delivered throughout the entire series and it's a gentle reminder to us all that Mikey isn't one to be messed with. <laughs> Now this is also a gentle reminder for you to like this video. Thank you. Now let's enter the top 10. We have even more gang members on this list who aren't to be messed with. Windbreaker is a relatively new anime that features some of the most badass characters. We'll be talking about Sakura, the protagonist, Giryu, and Sugera, the huge one. You already know it's a bad idea to mess with these guys, but one gang doesn't know when to not interfere. The rival gang thinks they're hot stuff, wanting to avenge their leader whom Giryu beat up earlier. Now, they might have thought that they could teach Giryu a lesson, but that's a big mistake. Huge, in fact, because he's backed up by Sakura and Sugera. The trio knocks out the gang in no time, leaving them unharmed and standing tall. The rival gang? They're probably lying in a heap, regretting every life choice that led them to this moment. From the very start, the Bofurin boys have announced with their abilities that they're the boss and no one should ever try to mess with them. You know, it's always a terrible idea to mess with one of the Jojos and Jolene Kujo being the daughter of Jotaro is no exception. Enter Mirashon, one of Pucci's not-so-brilliant minions who decides to approach Joni with some seriously shady intentions. Big mistake, Mirashon. Big mistake. Now, if there's one thing we've learned from the Joe Star bloodline, it's that you never count them out, no matter how dire the situation seems. But here's the thing. These Jojos can never be outsmarted. They let you think you're winning, and then BAM! You're on the floor, brutally destroyed and regretting messing with them. This is one of the best beatdowns from this anime series, if not the best. What we've learned from this scene is never Never play baseball with Jolene. She'll beat the shit out of you with the baseball. As for Mirashon, huh, what can we say? Her own stand betrayed her. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to watch this series ASAP.
Ah yes, the disastrous life of Kaneki. Poor guy was traumatized for life after his date with Rize, who introduced him to the whole ghoul fiasco. But hey, nobody knew he would turn from a shy and bookish guy to a ruthless ghoul. Now, Jason, who'd been torturing him for 10 days straight. Seriously, this guy had a hobby of ripping off Kaneki's limbs just to watch them grow back. Imagine thinking that's a fun way to spend your time. Jason clearly had no idea what he was getting himself into. After all, going through physical as well as psychological torture for 10 days straight is no fun and you're bound to reach a breaking point. Now, we we all know that in the world of Tokyo Ghoul, the breaking point isn't just a mental breakdown, it's a full blown transformation into a brutal ghoul. You know it's about to go down when the protagonist's hair turns white. Kaneki made it very clear to Jason that he shouldn't have messed with him and absolutely destroyed him. <laughs> Let's lift our mood with a funny confrontation between Asta and Seke. Now Asta is our pint-sized hero whose voice is louder than a jet engine. On the other hand, Seke is Asta's self-proclaimed rival who talks big, but let's say his bark is worse than his bite. The fun really starts during the Magic Knight's entrance exam. Seke, thinking he's going to crush the competition, singles out Asta as an easy target to boost his reputation. Big mistake, huge one at that. Despite Seke's flashy, magic and arrogant attitude, Asta demolishes him with raw physical strength and his anti-magic sword. Seke's face when Asta breaks his magic? <laughs> Absolutely priceless. He must have learnt the valuable lesson to never underestimate Asta again. After all, this little guy is full of the kind of power that no one in the entire series possesses. Gotta stay away from him. <laughs> Let's move on to Diablo from the time I got reincarnated as a slime, the most loyal and faithful servant of Rimuru. He's the kind of guy we fell in love with at first sight, not solely because of his looks, but because of his badass powers as well. We get to see his terrifying powers in his fight against the clerics of the Seven Luminaries, a powerful group within the Church of the Holy Empire Ruberios. The group was clearly unaware of the fact that they'd be absolutely crushed if they tried to challenge Diablo, and that's exactly what happened. Diablo's despair time showed them what actual despair feels like, crushing them into nothingness. You know you made a big mistake when you pick a fight with a guy who could probably rearrange the entire battlefield with a snap of his fingers. Diablo effortlessly turns their bravado into a lesson on why challenging a demon is a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad idea. Jinwoo starts as an E-ranked hunter. E for, nah, that's not impressive. But a few things happen and our boy turns into an overpowered hunter who could beat any monster into submission. Dude went from zero to hero real quick. Now a group of hunters decides to betray him and take him on. It's never a good idea to mess with a guy who's been leveling up all this time. So what Jinwoo does is brutally kill all of them. I mean, you can't expect something like this from Jinwoo, but this makes it very clear that Jinwoo isn't your average and naive hunter anymore. But really, who could blame Sung Jinwoo? You mess with the bull, you get the horns. Or in this case, you mess with the hunter, you get the blade. If you betray him, you're definitely in for some serious trouble. And I have to take a moment to talk about how glorious this scene was animated. The background music as he cuts through them just gives me goosebumps. This is gonna come from... <laughs> Let's move on to Saitama, the bold wonder of One Punch Man and a hero so powerful that he could defeat any opponent with a single punch. <laughs> Despite his incredible strength, he looks like he couldn't even open a bottle on his own. Poor guy is always going on about his stuff when he comes face to face with unwanted rivals. Take for example, Snek, who tried to rookie crush Saitama. Poor Snek. He's just a typical hero with a big ego and a bigger mouth. The dude might have thought that Saitama wouldn't be able to hurt to fly before charging at him, but surprise, his single punch is enough to take out anything from a fly to a massive alien. It's funny how everybody judges Saitama by his face and ends up KO instantly. The 
fight, well, if you blinked, you missed it. Snake spends more time talking than actually fighting. So the biggest takeaway on this one isn't to let boldness fool you, because when it comes to Saitama, every punch packs enough power to make you rethink your life choices. Next up we have Levi, the ruthless captain from Attack on Titan, who's known to crush titans like their ants. It's always, always a bad idea to be on his bad side because he won't spare your life no matter how much you beg. The Beast Titan really rubbed Levi the wrong way after killing a bunch of members from his squad. This big fella made the mistake of messing with Levi's squad and boy did he pay the price. Levi absolutely destroyed Zeke, slicing through his arms and legs and making him submit. The expressions of pure horror on Zeke's face were so satisfying. Only and only Levi could make someone like the Beast Titan quiver from fear. Dude must have been traumatized for whatever years of his life were left. After watching this scene, I'm half convinced that the walls were built to protect Titans from Levi because when Levi gets down to business, even the mightiest of Titans learn that messing with humanity's deadliest soldier is a shortcut to death. Have you ever seen the kind of fight that ends before starting? Yeah, the fight between Shanks and Eustace Kid is that fight. Come, sonny. Now we've all seen how impressive Kid's fight against Big Mom was, all of us were in awe of his fighting prowess. However, in front of Shanks, Kid's powers meant nothing. Shanks quickly ended the fight using his divine departure, annihilating Kid and his men. Fun fact, this was the same technique Goldie Roger used against Oden Kozuki. Anyway, back to Shanks, alright? He literally turns into a demon when he senses his men in danger. Knowing Kid's intentions, it was only wise to make Kid submit as soon as possible. Every anime can have only one red-haired badass character, and in One Piece's case, it's Shank, not Kid. This fight made it very clear to all of us that Shanks is a much deadlier and more effective fighter than most of the characters from One Piece. Make sure to never get on his bad side or else you'll be divinely departed to the other side. What's the worst thing you can do to ruin your day? Messing with Gojo. Yep, that's right. Gojo probably wears his blindfold just to make everyone feel better about themselves. Or maybe he has these beautiful eyes. You know what I'm talking about. You see, Jogo really shook hands with his own demise when he decided to mess with Gojo. Bro thought he could single-handedly take on the honoured of your wildest dreams. During this fight, Gojo enlightened Jogo about the concept of infinity before destroying him. The funniest thing is that, by all means, Jogo is not weak. He's really, really strong for a curse. It's just that Gojo is mad strong and this didn't even look like a fight it was straight up gojo bullying jogo also this is the fight that broke the internet because we saw gojo's beautiful ocean eyes for the very first time in conclusion if gojo ever asks you if you want to see his true power just politely decline and run for your life That's a wrap for today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the most legendary and satisfying punches in anime and give it a thumbs up before you go. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell icon for the latest updates on all of our videos. Until next time.